Hey y'all, welcome to Risen Rogue Academy. Uh, I'm here with a tour of my website. I'm not, it's it's not a full tour because I'm only gonna go over one article. But just so you, it, just in case you didn't know, I do have a website called The Risen Report. Um, I use it for uh, a lot of cool things. So I have some infographics on dungeon bosses that you can take a look at. So they're like Pokemon cards and they explain how to win against bosses. Most of them are bosses that go invulnerable. Um, I'm gonna have Challenger X do a full tour, but I'm just gonna show you real quick the things that I have on this website. I have things that will uh, make it easier to farm. It'll show you where all the plots are and what they are. That took me a long time, so I hope you appreciate it. But today I'm gonna go over uh, a new series called uh, I don't know what I'm going to call it, but it's Dofu's Touch FAQ, and um, I'm going to go over the first half of April. I don't know if I'm going to do it every two weeks or four weeks. Anyways, for now, I'm doing it in the middle of April, so let's get started. So, I'm, so basically, this page is I go on Discord, and I see people ask questions in the, free, in, in the official Discord. And I have been collecting them and making this page that would basically explain what all those questions are and what my answers are to them. So if we're going to start, I'm going to show you where do I learn Hunter. And if you look on my website, you'll, you'll have this graphic there for you. It basically says where to learn Hunter. You go to Astrub Forest, 3, negative 27. And then you go to this guy over here and he is going to teach you the hunter profession. So that's the first thing that I put on this page. Okay, next thing is choosing a good profession. So I, so I saw this question about choosing a good profession and the main thing I wanted to say about that is that you, every profession has like its main thing. It's got its main thing that it does. So like, if you are, let's say, a shovel smith, then your your main craft will probably be in the earlier levels. It'll probably be Axel, which is a water shovel that gives eight one AP, and that's like the go-to for shovel smith. Um, and and every every profession is like that. For um, for baker, it's um, whole wheat bread no it's cereal bread whole wheat bread is two pods to carry cereal bread is one pod to carry and as far as other uh servers may go um as far as baker and hunter baker and butcher the 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 thing that sells the fastest is always cereal bread cereal bread sells faster than anything else but it's also important to say that that doesn't mean that that's what you should be making because at the same time, if you are making, if everyone's making cereal bread, then maybe you want to make Tade bread, or you want to make um, rolled oat bread, just because there will be less competition and it might sell faster anyways. But I've actually had an idea that I really think that Uncama should implement. The idea that basically, I think that you should be able to buy any bread you want and then press one button, full heal, and it will automatically use your bread in the most efficient manner. And I think this would be amazing because it would make it so that you could buy multiple kinds of healing items and it would automatically flesh out the market for bread and, and meat because all of it would be valid because it would auto heal you anyways. And I think that would be amazing. Um, also, so so continuing with this, I would say for Alchemist, Recall Potion sells really fast. So in general, you can all the professions are good professions. Miners can make soul stones. The way that the market works is you have to find out what you can make that you are pretty much already like that is accessible to you that's something that you're pretty much doing anyways and find a way to capitalize on it so i have a tiktok that i'll link 
below and it will talk about how there's a thought process that goes to making commas in this game and it's you have to expose yourself to the market put yourself in front of as many things in the market as possible become familiar with it until you get to the point where you can say oh well i can craft this but the materials are more expensive than the craft itself so maybe i should farm this and and sell the, those materials instead of using it towards a profession or you could say i'm already farming this for my profession and but on the side i'm gathering this other resource that just i happen to be dropping what can i craft with it oh i can make commas with that as well or you can even say you can even say i am crafting this nobody wears it but if i crush it in into runes which is something that i could go over at some point then it's worth more as that so you really like choosing a good profession it's hard to really say what's the best profession just because it, you have to find out what people are buying what would sell fast or or slow but for more and and just capitalize on it and shh, be quiet about it don't tell anybody what you're doing to make commas and that's how you make commas you gotta you gotta have your own niche okay what order should i be doing quests as you can see i went on a rant a little bit on this page my main point for for this is the Ankama does great with being like, okay, the point of the game Dofus is to hunt the Dofus. And the way that they make that clear is your first quest pretty much is to hunt the silver Dofus, which they make it clear it come it's a dragon egg and it gives you incredible power. And I really like that they started with the silver Dofus just because because it, it really encapsulates the point, the story mode of the game. Because what a lot of people do, they join the game, they do XP groups, and they jump straight into Colosseum and just PvP and drop sets. And the story is rich. It's a rich story. And eventually what Ankama is going to do is they're going to say, you know what, We well, they already said you know what. They said we're going to make all the Dofus questable. And I really think that's important. Because the lore is very deep in Dofus, and uh, people don't give it enough credit, and I really think the this silver Dofus first thing was a beautiful idea, and I strongly agree with it, and, and that's what I have to say about that. And then so the the question is, where do you go after you get the silver Dofus? And by the way. When you fight the final boss to get the Silver Dofus, I have a video on that, a solution for that fight, and you can watch that. I'd, I'd much prefer that you figure it out yourself, because that's what this game's about. But um, if you need guidance with that, I do have a video on it. What order should you be doing the quests? Easy peasy lemon squeezy, I'll give it to you right here. So the first thing you're going to do, you get the Silver Dofus, go for the Kewit Dofus. How do you get the Kewit Dofus? You want access to Wabbit Island. So you're gonna go to Uncama the Village. It's a zap. There's a zap called Uncama the Village. You go four maps up from that zap, and there's Automize Assistant. An Automize Assistant will ask for one scare leaf wing of each color, and they'll give you a potion that'll let you go to Wabbit Island. And then you're gonna go from Wabbit Island to or from from that place to Maddestrom Harbor, you're gonna take a boat to Wabbit Island. Then you do the quests from the characters that are at the introduction of that island, and just follow along with it. And that's how you'll eventually get access to the Kewit Dofus. And I think that's really what you should be doing next. You start with the Silver Dofus, then you do the Kewit Dofus. And unfortunately they sort of mislead you a little bit. They're like, okay, well, talk to all these people, they'll give you quests. And so the closest quest to Arky, who gives you that thing, is a Pandawa who sends you to Pan Pandawa Island, which is stupid. 
you are not going to Pandala Island after you get the Silver Dofus, because those quests start at level 140. So what are you going to do? I'm going to tell you. You're going to first, first thing you're going to do, Silver Dofus, then Kewit Dofus. After you complete Kewit Dofus, the next quest you should go for is Kania Island. You go to Kania Island, and that is what's going to uh, be quests that are close to your level. I believe those quests start at like level uh, 70, and they go up all the way to like level 140, I think, which is perfect because when you're done with those Kania quests, you're going to go from Kania to either Pandala or to Automai or to Frigost. Because Frigost opens up at level 100. And then once you can access those Frigos quests, you can quest for the Ice Dofus. And I will eventually, when I have the passion in my heart, make um, an Ice Dofus quest, uh, Ice Dofus quest video, an article, and everything that I need to do there. But in the meantime, um, Frigos is the way to go. And all is the way to go after you finish Kania. Then you might ask, what do I do about Automai? The thing you're going to do about Automai is that you're going to get a quest from... from On Automai Island, there's a guy called Automai. Go figure. He's at the very top of the island. You go to the center of the island. You walk up a tree all the way to the top, and you meet Automai. Here's what he's going to have you do. He's going to have you catch every single monster in the game. Got to catch them all. And you're gonna, and that's what you're gonna do. The first few quests are gonna give trash XP, but as it, as you keep doing it, it's gonna ramp up. You're gonna get real. It's gonna get really difficult. When on Grandapan, that's how I leveled all my characters. As I just did that quest, I hopped on, did the, did the Eternal Harvest quest. That's what it's called. I should have said that in the beginning. Eternal Harvest quest. You do the Eternal Harvest quest, and that's how I got XP on a lot of my characters. And that's how you get the Ochre Dofus, which gives 1 AP. It's one of the best Dofuses in the game. Okay? So that's the order that you're going to do quests. Um, Automai Island, you could definitely do that at any point. Um, you can do it from the beginning. You can do it from when you already have a little bit of um, ability. But um, that is... Automai, you can do at any point until it roadblocks you with DPS or whatever. Um, okay, so it looks like the rest of them are kind of quick questions. Um, where do I get rid of professions? You So it used to be that you would go to um, the beginner island and you could reset it a million times. You can't do that anymore. So now if you want to unlearn a profession, you need a profession D leveling potion. They're made by alchemists. I don't think they're too expensive just because they're so easy to craft. But that's the way you do it, is you, uh, that's how you do, uh, get rid of a profession. The next question is, am I supposed to be selling things that I drop? And what I'm going to say to that is, basically, everything that you're not going to use in your profession or in your questing or in, in, if you, if it's, if you don't have a use for it, sell it. Especially now, because right now, there is such a, a, um, there's such a scarcity of resources that basically everything is worth more right now. Eventually, the the the, um, the supply will populate a bunch more as the server continues. But if you want to start selling stuff, sell all your stuff right now, all your resources, unless you need them. If you need them, keep them. They're they're worth more in your pocket. But ultimately, everything you sell. If you want to buy it again, you can use the commas you sold it for to buy it. So you, so it's better to have a liquidated, you know, pocketbook, you know, instead of just hoarding resources in your bank that will eventually cause a fortune. No, sell your resources. They're worth more now and, um, and make those commas. And then I have mini FAQ. Where can I find what people are wearing at my level? So if you go to dofustouch.com. And you go to community, then character pages. And you can filter to find players your level on your server. Click on them and you can check what gear they're wearing. That's how you do that. You can you can check any person's gear on, on the Dofus Touch website. 
Uh, they can technically block you out of it. They can hide all their information if they don't want people to know what they're wearing. But uh, that's the most resourceful, resourceful way to do it. So you go to the current server, because if you do it on an on a old server, you might run across a lot of people who haven't logged on in a while, and it won't let you access their, their profile. So go on one of the new servers, type in the, or filter their, your level, or around your level, and you'll see what people at that level are wearing. Where, how do I put stats on a pet? Stats on a pet, you can also learn from the Dofus Touch uh, website. You go to the encyclopedia and then the pets, and then search for your pet, and it'll tell you what diet it is and how often to feed it. Where do you get water? So water, and as well as a lot of other things, so water, salt, pepper, um, all that kind of stuff is, um, it, you, you used to be able to buy it from the grocery store, from an NPC, but now everything is, is player player market based, um, player run economy. So water you have to drop, pepper you have to drop, salt you have to drop, everything you have to drop. And so the best way to um, find out what drops what is to go on to um, the bestiary and with the bestiary, any item you want that is droppable, you type it into the bestiary and it'll tell you what monsters drop it. So you can see water. So so you'll see all of the monsters that drop water. And if you're broke, like water, and you don't have any professions, water is a great way to actually make some commas. So you farm them and drop them and then sell them. Um, but also some monsters will, draw, will drop containers of items. Um, so th that's like the best way because each container has 10 of that item in it so you can search like barrel of water and then you can find all the monsters that drop barrels of water so yeah that's my um frequently asked questions for now um and it's still april so i'll be continuing adding to this list um and most likely we'll make another video on it Assume, depending on what other questions I run into and that's what I have for you right now uh, don't forget to like comment and subscribe and you can check out this website and get all the information uh, that I post on here I'm gonna link it down below it's the risen report and also it's worth noting that I'm eventually gonna get a an official uh, URL an official domain for this um, so keep your eyes peeled. I'm going to update the URL of this website soon. And thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. Please comment if you think that this is a good series to continue with. And uh, good luck on your adventures. Bye.